Greetings Exiles and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about League Starter. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about League Starters in general, how a build can become one, and what is my League Starter for 3.14. And don't worry, even if you don't like my own League Starter for the next league, I'm going to leave you with enough information about League Starter so that you can utilize them to make your own version as well, with any ascendancy you like. So, let's begin with the basics behind the League Starter. What is a League Starter? Well, it's kind of self-explanatory, but there are things that even experienced Path of Exile players does not know about a League Starter. And some of these information are the three important criteria that the build needs to meet in order to become a League Starter. And this is important because even if the build meets two out of the three of them, it's not a League Starter still. So what are these three criteria? Well, the first one is very important, and that is a build needs to be able to function without items. Now, this idea is based on the fact that you can be unlucky most of the time in Path of Exile, so if you start a league, you most likely not going to get any good items. Unless if you are lucky, for example, and drop a Tapula or a Raw Exalted Orb, and then spend it to buy like good gear. But that's not going to happen most of the time, so the idea of a league start is that it's a build that works without items. And that's, by the way, mandatory. If you have a build that needs items to function, it's not a league starter. And based on that, we know that a league starter is a build that is based around a good passive tree. And what is a good passive tree? It's a passive tree that gives you lots of damage and life, mostly. And any secondary defensive layer, for, like for example, evasion based uh, league starter have evasion with dodge and acrobatics with phase acrobatics. And a melee league starter might have lots of physical damage mitigation, and so on. And you get most of your damage from your passive tree. Now you might want to invest into like a decent weapon if you are a melee build or like a wand with some cast speed or spell damage if you can. But elite starter should be able to operate without these things and that's what's good about these builds. The second criteria that elite starter must meet and that is the fact that the build must be able to clear all early game content including being able to scale into mid game. This is extremely important because what's the point of just beating the game 10 acts and then when you get to mapping where you will get most of your profits, your build won't be able to do these contents. What's the point of playing that build? If you can't get currency to finance your first actual build after your league starter, then what's the point of playing a league starter? You will just end up re-rolling into another league starter afterward. So, a league starter should be able to clear all game 10 acts with basic basic rare items with just like resistances, and then transitions into mid game after investing few chaos into some good unique items that will give you the ability to farm basic currency in order to start financing your actual first build of the league. If the league starter cannot scale into mid game, and with that I mean map system, then it's not actually a league starter, it's basically a big waste of time. The last criteria that any league starter should meet, and that is the fact that it does feel good to play, even without items and without like high level. It should be able to deal good damage, it should not be a glass cannon, it shouldn't be a hassle to get to the map system. You should be able to get into 10 all to beat all the game 10 acts without having to invest lots of currency into it or like invest anything at all or like you don't have to be a professional top player. And again, this is based on the fact that most of the useful nodes you are getting are on the passive tree so that you don't have to do too much except planning a good passive tree. And based on that piece of information, a league starter is basically a class that starts on each side of the tree. And since we only want to focus on life and damage at the start, there are few classes that doesn't really shine as a league starter. The first one is Shadow, because the damage nodes nearby are quit nodes, and quit is not really that useful at the start. Now, I'm not saying you cannot league start as a Shadow, yes you can, but it's not going to be as strong as some other classes, if you get what I'm saying. Another class that is not, I'm not going to say good league starter, but it's not like for every player, and that is a witch. You know, spells have lots of damage, but like you will have the worst survivability as a starting witch. Unless you go mind over matter, of course. But you still, you don't want to start a league, a league with a witch because you will be squishy. And unless you are a highly experienced player who have memorized all the moves of bosses in the early stages of the game, then you don't really want to start as a witch because you will get one shot at lots of the time. But if you can dodge everything, like manually, you will benefit from the high damage a witch can deal with its spells, like lightning spells, lightning trap for example, or stormbrand. 
We are going to give you an idea about a general league starter that I have planned for 3.14 and this league starter does not require you to be highly experienced and the passive tree is very simple, you will be tanky, you will not die a lot and you don't have to invest anything. So what is my league starter for 3.14? And I had to look at previous good league starters in order to make my own league starter. And for this league, I'm going to start with the Gladiator. But it's not going to be a generic bleed ball Gladiator like the one other people play. Now, why do I want to play a class that starts at the bottom side of the tree? For those of you who doesn't know, a Duelist, which is basically the class that starts over here, is the best starting class for any league, basically. There are lots of reasons for this. It is close to the Marauder side, which contains lots of life, lots of resistances, and lots of generic melee nodes that will be useful for you if you need to be tanky. It's cl the closest class to Constitution, which is lots of life. It has lots of powerful nodes, like Impel nodes nearby, which allows you to scale high damage in the early game without converting anything into Elemental. And if you want to be fast, you can go with the the ranger side of the tree which allows you to take lots of nodes with movement speed like this one for example and so on and it's very versatile that you start as a slayer not because a slayer is broken but because there's lots of useful nodes for you nearby and a gladiator is basically an ascendant slayer so why do you want to play as a gladiator let's talk about the ascendancy first a gladiator is one of the most universal melee ascendancies in the game. It can also play with range weapons if you want, but they have to be bleed otherwise you are not going to take advantage of that. So this ascendancy contains the best leveling ascendancy node in the game which is Arena Challenger. This node, as long as you are running blood or sand stance, gives you challenger charges and if you are running the stance then you will have all of the charges all the time and at maximum bonus which is 10 charges it will give you 20% more attack and movement speed this is an overall multiplier to your attack and movement speed so you will be 120% more efficient at doing everything basically clearing speed is something you really need at the start of the game and after that you would want to be tanky in the mid game because most players does not have access to high damage weapons for example so you just want to stay alive and this ascendancy covers you with that, with the block nodes, you have versatile combatant, and you will have pain force, and then you will have violent retaliation, and these are all the nodes you will be taking after arena challenger, because we will be playing melee while holding a shield. Dual wielding was destroyed by GGG in the previous update, so we are going to wield a shield in this one. And you will have the maximum chance to block even with without block chance on your crafted shield. With just like the passive tree alone that I'm going to show you, you will have 70% chance to block attack damage. And with the gladiator ascendancy, you will be able to block spell damage at the same ratio you block attack damage with versus that combatant. This is very powerful, and that's exactly why we are going with this ascendancy. And with that being said, let's begin working on our passive tree. So, we need life and damage, and we are scaling physical damage, which means that we want to invest into something like Impale. So, you have the option of starting with attack speed or melee physical damage. This is the node I mostly like to start with, but then I just like take this route, because it's the most universal route to take. Attack speed is generally more efficient at scaling your damage than just taking raw physical damage nodes, and you will end up taking this notable anyway by going over here. So, this is how my, you know, just like Act 1 tree, that's, that's a, an efficient tree for just like act one and since we are holding shield and you will be holding shield starting from level one we will take these nodes over here and from here we want to scale our life mostly and then regen we don't want to care too much about damage because if you are doing like act one boss you will need to recover lots of life you will have blood rage to recover later on but we need good regen so aside from your flask you would want to take the regeneration from this node and the regeneration from this node and they also give you a decent amount of life as well from here you will be lacking on damage especially accuracy but don't worry we are not going to take resolute technique and instead you are just going to take these accuracy nodes over here and from there you go up you take a jewel socket over here maybe put anything useful on it and then you go and take constitution from here you have basically took all of the essential survivability nodes for your starting build so you will start now focusing on some damage now the best thing to scale with physical damage is impale impale is the most broken damage scaling mechanic for any physical attack build and both impale node clusters happen to be close to our starting position as i've mentioned at the start of this video the first one is here which you are going to take manually and the second one is over here which also you are going to take manually and 
it's very important to understand that after you have taken both of the clusters, the one over here and the one over here, you can start using Dread Banner and Impale Support Gem, and you will have 100% chance to Impale at the end of the game. That alone, with these nodes, is going to give you around 200% more damage at the end. And then maybe later you have decided to invest into weapon with good base crit and thus decided to take crit nodes on the passive tree so you go all the way over here you take this crit cluster and maybe you take this jewel socket and these sword nodes with crit on them so again we are using a shield so it is extremely important that you go over all the way over here and take the shield nodes over here now if you are going with a build that is melee you are most likely going to use a sword because you know using jeweled foils is the most efficient way to scale damage with melee weapons but before that you might have noticed that we have path two ways over here it's more efficient to just like take the bottom path over here because we have went that took the trouble of going all the way over here to take these crit nodes so it's not really important to take to go all the way over here so we just like unallocate these next you might have invested into enough accuracy with like high level precision so you just drop these nodes maybe you just like drop all of these all together and maybe take them later when you are high level enough and then start investing into like high damage nodes so if you want to use swords you will, you are going to use a jeweled foil which requires lots of dexterity so it would make sense to go to the right side of the passive tree so we are going to take all of these nodes there's a very powerful shield node over here which we are going to take we are going to take a jewel socket which is nearby and then we are going to continue we are taking moving speed and attack speed nodes we are going to take more damage nodes chance to block and increase attack damage with shields and we are going to go over here we are going to take these generic attack and crit chance with attributes nodes from here we are going to path and take the nearby life node cluster and then go ahead and take the most important sword attack node on the entire passive tree and that is both brutal blade and fatal blade Fatal Blade will give you lots of damage in the form of crit chance and crit multiplier and Brutal Blade is going to give you lots of attack damage, attack speed and block chance while wielding a sword or dual wielding. Then we can go top, take this node and then take these accuracy nodes because they are really powerful and they give us dexterity. Then we can take the crit nodes over here, then we can take the jewel socket if we want to. And that's it basically. That's a tree that I would consider to be very powerful as a leak starter. From there you just like invest maybe into cluster jewels, you take more life nodes and then maybe invest into nodes that you have decided to drop at the start of the leveling stage, you know, just to get more life, maybe more damage and so on. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's how you make a leak starter passive tree. Now I'm going to show you footage for how the build would play. I have decided to take Cyclone and I have decided to fully min-max this build, like absolutely maximum min-maxing. Just to give you a picture of how this build would look like if you have decided to like push it in the end game. If you have decided not to push it in the end game, then just like you would go with this passive tree and then you would immediately like start planning your actual build for the league the one that you are going to sink most of your currency onto it but for this video i just decided to give you a build that actually transitions into all stages of the game just in case you decided to push it if you liked how it plays or how it feels and yeah thank you all for watching if you have any questions make sure to hit me up in the comment section and i will make sure to get back to you as soon as i can my name is phoenix and i will see you all in the next video